show you the mini project that you can also make minutes from now if you like. Well, yeah, first watch the tutorial, I would say. So this is a little chunky gift, a little booklet. It has the designs of our Teal Memories kit on there, as you see. And when I open it, it opens like this. There are a whole lot of envelopes in here and they are attached to each other like this. And in each of the envelopes, you can add a little note, a little letter. There are cards in the uh, sheets that you can use to write a little wish on. So if this is a gift, you can put a wish or a bit of money or something else or a little coin or something in here uh, for day one. And then day two, they open the second envelope. Day three, they open the, uh, the third envelope. Yeah, and you have to hope that they only <laughs> open them when they are intended to. So not like with advent calendars, open everything on the first day. No, that's not what this is for. So yeah, this is a very cute little gift here. You can put it like this. You can uh, have it standing up when it's closed, etc. Um, I really love this. One thing I forgot to mention in the tutorial is to print everything on 160 grams paper, not lighter, because otherwise it would be super flimsy and it would not be pretty. 160 grams paper, that's about 60 uh, pound cover. So actually just twice the weight of normal paper. That would be already a lot better. And uh, because there are panels on the front and the back, it makes the whole thing a bit sturdier so that it's uh, very pretty like this. So I'm already explaining things how to make this. So let's not wait any longer and let's go to the tutorial. Enjoy. So these are the sheets that you're gonna get when you download the files. And there are seven pages plus a back design. Now the back design is kind of optional. You can solve a lot of things with ink, but I'll tell you about it. Let me show you. So this is gonna be the cover and a card. Then we have all the little envelopes right here and the closure circles, extra pockets, the panels and some extra cards. And on the first and the last page it says print on back design or you can ink the edges of the other side. And for the cards as well, you can print these on the back design, but if you want to keep them white, that's perfectly good as well. I chose to print the back design here. And you can actually also print the back design on all these um, all these pockets, but you will only see about a, this little piece and that little piece. So it's a bit more economical to ink that if you have some ink. Okay, and then when everything is printed, you know what's gonna happen. Cut it all out. So I cut everything out and I put it in this box. I always do that because otherwise I'm going to lose everything everywhere and I have to search for it. And then I'm going to start making the cover first. So I have these two pieces and these are going to be the cover. And before I'm going to glue these pieces together, I'm going to score these four score lines. I'm going to do that with a scoring board but you can always use a mat and an empty pen or an embossing pen this just is a bit faster and easier make sure you're not going to go through the paper so don't push too hard the more you do this the more you get the hang of it of course that's one there and then i'm going to fold these for crisp folds, it's always nice to have a bone folder, but that's super optional. There, like this. And I'm going to attach these first and then I'm going to extra ink the edges a bit. But to attach these, you can use just glue or glue stick. I'm going to use double-sided tape because I love that. And I'm going to put the tape right next to the fold. That's why I like to make the folds first, so I can put my tape or glue next to the fold. Always make sure 
it sticks when you use this remove the backing and then just lay this on top again next to the fold like this and now we have one big cover which is going to close like this but before I'm going to add more to this, I'm first going to um, add a bit more ink to the edges. This is optional because already a lot of the edges have this fake faux ink edge. But I like to add a bit more and also on the inside because the inside now doesn't have any. But you definitely don't need to do this. It just makes everything stand out a bit more. And you can add as much or as little as you like. I'm a fan of ink. And I'm just, I'm just using a brown one. This is vintage photo, I think. Any brown. You, look, if you, if you like to use hot pink, please go ahead. Express yourself. Express your creativity. So I'm going to go all along the edges and every um, um, fold. And also on the inside and also every fold. Oh, I forgot to do something. So I'm going to show you now, which is again optional. I have this corner punch and I'm going to round the corners a bit, but only um, these, these four, of course. <laughs> there are no other corners, Tina. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's because they're already attached to each other. This is optional. But the advantage is that um, corners are always a little bit um, fragile and when you round them they're less fragile. And of course you see now that I really need to ink these edges. See and a little bit of ink and you hardly see anything that I cut it. So this is a personal preference. Inking also helps to remove the white from the side of the paper. I know it's it's teeny tiny, but if you look to it from a side, that stark white will show through. And I don't really like if you have such a vintage design that then suddenly poof, like stark white is showing. Um, this is me being a nitpicker, for sure. So, and now the inside as well. See, I'm going to go a bit harder here because, of course, there's nothing on the back yet. So this is inked and at this stage you can still choose which is the outside and which is the inside. I'm just going to go like this and I'm going to add some panels. But I'm not going to attach all the panels yet because I'm going to add some ribbon as well. So I'm going to start with uh, this one. And as you see, if you choose to round that corner, you also want to round this corner. I'm just going to use the same corner rounder. I'm also going to add this one already. And I'm also going to add this one already. So these three I'm going to start with. These two will have a ribbon underneath. And before I'm going to do anything, I'm going to again, and you kind of see me do this a lot, ink the edges. And then I'm just going to attach these with some tape on the outside and glue on the inside. You can use glue all over. That's just a personal preference. I like my edges to stick really well. So let's start with this one.
there and the first panel is about to go up and from now on it's really important to check if your uh, piece is the right way up and this is the short piece that's gonna come on that side and now I'm gonna just make sure there's about three millimeter or an eighth of an inch all around well just place it in the center as much as possible there we go and the first panel has been added now you can think Tina why didn't you already design the panel on there well this is 160 grams paper but it is still not super sturdy that's why I usually work with panels it just makes the whole thing a lot more sturdy and you have lots more of fun crafting to do so I'm going to add attach these as well and here in the corners, I'm just going to uh, add a little bit of more glue because the tape's a bit hard to put in the corners. There, I didn't put this one as straight as I wanted to. It's a little bit wonky, but it's on there. I can't change it anymore. And I'm going to embrace it. Okay. So now before I'm going to add these, I have here two pieces of ribbon. These are about, let's see, these are about, I think, 13 inches long. And I'm going to attach one here and I'm going to attach one here. And then when it closes, these two will meet to um, make a bow. You'll see, you'll see. Oh, you can also use these really thin, strong magnets instead. And then I would put one here, but I would put them in the center and one here under the panel or a washer if the magnet's really strong that's enough uh, you can figure it out for yourself but make sure you know what to do before you add the panels but i'm going to show with just ribbons just gonna add a little piece of um, tape here but i want to measure the center because i've been there i thought yeah i can eyeball that and then i couldn't hmm. So here's the center, if I can still count. Yeah, so here's the center. And uh, quickly here as well. There. Take care, don't put any tape on the outside eight of an inch, three millimeter border because the panel will not cover that. So I'm gonna place it here up till about here just to be safe and one here i'm gonna make it a bit longer normally i like to have a, about two inches of um, tape to really secure my ribbon but i don't have any <laughs> i don't have two inches here so it's gonna be one inch here okay so let me start here Simply going to take my ribbon and cover it. There, that's okay. I see that my um, tape is wider than my ribbon, but that doesn't matter at all. And then here as well. And this one is going that way. Here, yeah, if you have these little thingies. Make sure they're not peeking out of your uh, panel later. Maybe a bit straighter, like this. Yeah, that's good. And now the panels can come off. So I already cut these corners as well. I rounded them, I inked them, and now I can uh, add these. There, this looks pretty already. So now and when I close it, like it should, like this, you can uh, bind them together here. And I'm also going to add already some inside panels. These ones, these ones, but not yet this one. So these are the panels. This one will come here. I have to round the corners again. Um, this one here, this one here, and these ones here. Make sure that the little medallion is facing the same way all over because you can easily think, oh, it's like this, and then, oh, I did it wrong. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to leave this one for now. I'm going to round these corners, ink them, and attach them. 
So this middle panel will have to wait and now it is time to make all the pockets. As you can see, there are seven of these pockets, one for every day of the celebration week uh, to each other in the process and then I'm going to finish them. So let me put these aside for a bit. There's going to be a bit inking. I'm going to add closures, etc, etc, etc. But first I'm going to score the lines. And I'm going to score these two, these two, and here there are two. Because the envelopes are going to be so bulky, we need this extra uh, piece here. It's going to perhaps be a little bit uh, fiddly, but try to make these folds as crisp and as precise as possible. That already will help you a lot. So I'm going to start with these. Then I'm going to do this one. And then this is one very long one. And then an extra one here. That's just an eighth of an inch further or um, three millimeter about. And I'm going to fold them very nicely. Actually, this can go. Yeah, this will go better. And this all in so this is all folded etc i'm going to add a little bit more ink first on the outside here i'm going to show you this time because there are a few things that need to be done so then this fold then this side a little bit. This doesn't all need very much. This one. This fold. Also this curve here deserves a bit of attention. Now, if you didn't cut very precise, ink will help um, hide that. So that's, that's really a plus. Now there's also going to be a little bit of a flap on the inside here. We're gonna cover that but this piece there will be like a little piece here that will be showing you see so it's going to be like this but this will be showing and also this piece so I'm going to add a little bit of extra ink there so I have this scrap piece of paper I'm gonna just add a little bit of ink here on the edge then I'm gonna add you know what I'm gonna fold it just a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of color here. It's just, it's so little color that you have to add that I find it a bit odd to print a whole back page there. You know, uh, that's why I chose not to, but you can still print the uh, back design on the back. And I'm also going to add, open this, a bit of ink here. Yeah, I don't have a smaller um, blender, I think, just here, there. And then you can let the ink dry a bit. Okay, I'm not going to add this panel yet, but what I'm going to do is first add the closure. And for the closure, we have all these little circles here, but on their own, they're a little bit too flimsy. So I'm going to make them a bit sturdier. These, by the way, are perfect to punch out if you printed them at 100% with a 5-8 circle punch. I think this is 5-8. I'm going to check that just to be sure. Yes, this is 5-8. And I make this closure so often that I usually have a whole box with these 5-8 uh, pieces of circles that I already punched out of sturdy scrapbook paper. So this is really sturdy paper, like, I don't know, 250 grams, I think. Um, and I'm going to glue two on top of each other. And then glue one of these on top of each other. When that's done, I'm going to ink the edges, punch a hole in the center, and it is ready. Let me show you quickly one. I have my thingy. If you already saw me do this like five million times, just um, speed up a little bit, I would say. Skip this part. So I have here two of my uh, scrap pieces. Glue them on top of each other, add more glue, 
and then on top glue one of these circles. Now, of course, you see all kinds of colors on the side, etc. Now, the bottom you're not going to see. If you're going to look at that bottom, you're weird. Just saying. Okay, so ink the edges. So it looks more like one, one thing. Then pierce a hole in the center. You can use a crocodile, obviously. And yeah, with a brad, this is ready. This closure is ready. So there are seven pockets, which means um, we need 14 of these. And where are these gonna go? There's one gonna, let me put this aside for a bit. One is gonna go in here and one is going to go about here. And then we close it like this. So I'm going to find the center here going to make a mark. It's okay if you're about in the center, this circle will completely um, cover your marks. So I'm very confident using just a pen here. And then here in the center as well, that will be for me about here. Here is the center. And for here, I'm going to use my ruler, line this up with this first mark that I made. And I'm gonna measure think one and a half inch inward. That's here. Let me check again if this is really in the center now. A little bit more here. Yeah, here it is. I'm gonna punch these marks. I take my closure tool again. For those who see uh, me using this for the first time, it's just a piece of chipboard with a slot here. And now I have my um, closure piece. I put my little brad through it. I slide the whole brad in the slot through the hole. Here, open the legs. I can do that confidently because this piece is uh, keeping everything in place. And then I'm going to use a little piece of washi tape. It doesn't matter which kind because it's inside of the envelope no one's gonna ever see that hopefully otherwise you're weird again okay and i'm going to add this on top and if you slide anything in there it won't um be in the way you know like this and if i now slide this off i have a nice little gap to add my um thread later to close the pockets and I'm going to add one here as well. If you happen to have brads with very long legs, um, make sure they go this way because otherwise they will stick out. And for this one, since I'm going to add a panel on top here, I'm not going to use my washi tape, but just double-sided glue. Uh, double-sided <laughs> double glue. Double-sided tape, I mean. Okay, so I'm just going to stick that on top. I'm going to keep the backing on for now. It's just to protect, you know, it, it forms an extra film of glue between um, these prongs and the paper. It just protects them a bit better. Okay, and this can go now. And now I can add glue or tape to this piece there. And it, it, it's possible that you need to cut off a little bit and that is perfectly fine because I made the panel a bit large. So I'm probably going to have to, uh, yeah, I see. I'm going to have to uh, cut off a little bit here and that's perfectly fine. I'm gonna cut off a bit here and there because you cut these by hand. You will never do it perfectly. And that is amazing. That's fine, that's human. So I'm already going to take off like a little bit here because I want to check that it's still possible to close and not peek out here. Okay, a little bit more. Okay, this is great. Here's my ink again. As I said, optional. 
This time I'm just going to use some glue here because a lot of this little piece of paper is just curves. There. Take this backing off and then glue this on here. There. Beautiful. And now I see that this piece is not lining. I, I cut off a little bit too much here, but that's okay. You can or cut more, but mm, I wouldn't cut too much if not necessary. I'm just gonna add more ink here. <laughs> That'll help as well. There. And I see that I, in the future, need to add more ink here as well. Before I'm making these envelopes. There, everything's covered. And I am not going to assemble this envelope yet because we have to attach them to each other before closing them. So what I'm going to do now is prepare all these other envelopes exactly the same way. Oh yes, I quickly wanted to clarify one thing. So you see these uh, white pieces here. So don't score at the edge of the uh, color and the white here. I added that extra piece of color here. If you um, don't fold perfectly, you would see a little bit of white shining through. So I always bleed over my design a little bit more. That's, that's just uh, something that I do. So score at the um, shadowy parts, not the hard color white parts here. So here are two shadowy parts for these score lines. So don't score here. I just wanted to tell you that. So I finished all the pockets the same way. So they're fold and they're inks and the closures are added and some ink here, etc. They're all done. And the next thing I'm going to do is add tape to these three tabs of all the pockets. Now with tape, I can do that beforehand. With glue, you can definitely do that with glue too, but you can't do that beforehand because the, the, the glue will be dry. Um, too quickly even if you use wet glue instead of a glue stick that's that's totally your choice but um, if you choose glue just add glue only right before you're going to attach these i am just going to add tape and i'm going to add it on the front right next to the fold again see next to the fold And it's okay if my tape is not as wide as the, um, the tab, that's okay, but um, do it as close as possible to the fold, not to the other sides. And here, with that weird tab thingy, again, as close as possible to that second fold, not the first one. Because we need this little extra piece for uh, volume. So I'm going to attach, uh, I'm going to do exactly the same for all of these. So, and now I'm going to attach them to each other. Now it's very important because there are numbers on there to keep the same order. Unless you have some secret code with different numbers, that's up to you. But I'm just going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like we learned in elementary school. So what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to... Um, remove these yet, but I'm going to attach them like this to each other. See, one, two, three, I'm gonna go from uh, right to left. And I'm going to remove the tape and then glue this edge right next to that fold, that second fold again. If you're using glue, now is the time to apply glue here. Actually, every time when I remove uh, a backing, that's when you should apply glue. Okay, and now I'm going to line up this edge. I'm going to turn it this way, right next to that fold. Line up top and bottom as beautiful as you can. There we go. I'm going to remove this one. And then I'm going to add number three. And now, again, I'm removing the backing and I'm going to attach number four. See, and every time that little piece of 
an eighth of an inch is between there. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I'm gonna check because <laughs> I'm warning. Keep the order and then I see myself doing absolutely not that. So, number five. Number six, see, it needs a little bit of ink here. Quickly do that there. And then finally, number seven. And number seven will attach to the cover. So now that these are all attached, we can actually close them. So now I'm going to remove these backings. And then carefully stick them on top here. Okay, make sure they're straight before actually gluing them down. Now, next these two. pocket chain is ready and now you can put in there uh, uh, some money etc but I also added these cards that you can write something on and put into um, these pockets and of course yeah you can put in there anything that's rather flat but I, I, um, I left some room to actually put something in there not just um, a little tiny card you can actually uh, fold a bit of money in there as well and you will see and now for the closure i'm just going to use a bit of twine here i'm going to add should i put it on the bottom or the top i'm gonna add it to the bottom this time so just going to add some um, thread here double knot or triple one just to be sure Cut off the ends, tuck in the end if it's sticking out, close the envelope. And of course, you can put something in there later as well, um, of course. And then what I usually do, one, two, three, and then cut it off. There. You can also use it like this, one, two, one, two, three. That's actually pretty as well. I'm going to close all these pockets the same way these are all closed and now I will fold them like this so the one will be on top and you see with all these um, brads touching each other it's actually quite chunky and that is why the uh, cover is so thick so wide so let me take the cover here and this will fit in here now it's just a matter of uh, adding this here what I'm gonna do is take the last one number seven the tab you just take off the backing or you add glue and now I want to be precise I'm going to hold it like this because I don't want to glue that um, part that is an eighth of an inch but I'm going to glue this fold against the fold here right next to it also keep uh, the same distance from the sides as you did with your panels here now i'm going to flip this all to here so like this and now i can add my last panel on the inside like this right here so i'm gonna add some tape and glue
there this is attached so we fold this like this so the first thing that the receiver of this uh, booklet sees is number one to be opened and two three etc etc of course if you want to do it the other way around please go ahead <laughs> you choose um yeah this indeed, uh, these brads make it rather bulky, as I said before. You can also choose completely other uh, ways of closing this. You can actually use uh, wax seals if you really want them to wait until the uh, right date and not sneak in there. Or uh, use uh, glue, dot, glue dots that are not permanent so they can open and close them again. Or just um, just some tape, some, some washi tape if you like. And then it will be a lot thinner in there. So, and then the last thing I have, this is purely optional. These are the last two pockets in my, um, in my box here. And this comes here, this pocket. And this pocket comes right, I know, it's the other way around. So this pocket comes right here. You can also use only one if you like. And this pocket comes right here. But as you can see, uh, I have to round this corner again because I chose that. A little bit of extra ink. This one doesn't need a rounded corner. And then I'm going to add like really, really thin tape. This is only a quarter of an inch wide. You even have smaller ones. I think I even have smaller ones, but this one's opened and that's just the person I am. And I'm going to add some tape just on the bottom and here. And then anything you stick in there will just get uh, keep being stuck. As I said, this is completely optional. You really don't need to uh, add these. This. If you use glue, just add a little bead, a small bead of glue on the edge, not more. And only stick something in there when you're sure it is really dry. So, and now just line it up with the panel. Oops, and that's not how you line up. Can I save it? Oh, yes, I can. Line up better. I hope I can get this off as well. Yeah. Ooh. I'm kind of ruining it here, but you won't see it. Yep, that's a lot better. There, now you can actually uh, stick something in there. And I'm going to do exactly the same with this one. There we go. And now, close it like this. It's completely ready. And look what a beautiful gift that is. <laughs> it looks so cute. Cute, small, chunky. I love that it's chunky because that means that the receiver of this gift knows there's something in there. If your brass seem to be a bit too thick, you can also do a five-day celebration as long as it's, um, it's an uneven number. This is so beautiful. You can put it standing up there. And you can even have it out like this. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. To make this, just opt in on the link below and an email will be sent to you with the download link so you can make this yourself. If you have a friend that you think might like this tutorial as well, just send them a link to this video. And now I wish you a lot of fun making this and a very beautiful day. Bye-bye.